My dear audience, in this video I'll be putting a total of 10 CPUs through a bottleneck test featuring a high performance graphics card. So we'll determine how fast such a CPU actually ends up bottlenecking or limiting the graphics card's performance. Furthermore, I will also not only talk about, but show you how to easily detect a CPU or GPU bottleneck yourselves. So in today's test I have 10 CPU contestants lining up, a nice mix of older flagship models, partially from the era 2013 to 2021, as well as more modern processors of the mid-range or entry-level tiers. Thanks goes out to Marco, who actually gave me the idea to work on such a video. For this experiment, the following CPUs will take on their duty. For healthy reference values, the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X and Intel Core i9-11900K. Then the Ryzen 5 5600X, Ryzen 7 3700X, Ryzen 5 3600, Ryzen 3 3300X, Ryzen 7 2700X, Core i7 7700K, Ryzen 7 1700X, and last but not least, by far the oldest out of the bunch, the Core i7 4770K from 2013. Now before we get started, I would like to clearly point out that all CPUs were tested at stock settings, so neither overclocking nor any performance aids offered by Intel and AMD, such as multicore enhancement and precision boost overdrive respectively. In order to keep everything as transparent as possible, I'm putting the used test systems for each platform on the screen for you. The platform back from 2013, featuring the i7-4770K, of course only can be used with DDR3 memory. So I was pretty much forced to use whatever I had lying around, but I still wanted to go as high as possible in terms of memory frequency. Very important in this matter, needless to say, is the choice of the graphics card for a test like this. I've decided against going with a purely scientific approach to this, as it doesn't really represent a real life scenario as much. By that I mean testing at a screen resolution of 720p with the graphics details set to the minimum. Testing like that wouldn't actually yield any realistic, usable results for the majority of us. I'm therefore sticking to the resolutions Full HD 1080p and WQHD 1440p do however pair every single one of the CPUs with an NVIDIA RTX 3090 graphics card to help paint a clearer picture and better showcase a wider gap between different processors. Let's take a look at how well these 10 CPUs actually fare and which should be deemed as unusable and which models still can somewhat keep up. After that I will show you how you yourselves can check whether or not you have a bottleneck within your system. Let's bring in the charts for now. <laughs> 
as very much expected, a clear picture is being painted. Older as well as lower performance CPUs in combination with the current fastest graphics card on the market offer noticeably less performance. The experiment therefore is a success. As it goes to show, it's not always only the core count that's of utmost importance, something we thought for years. No, the CPU architecture plays a big role in this too. The topic future-proofness or future-proofing has always been quite controversial, since no one of us can tell what the future holds for real. A great example being AMD's immense comeback in 2017, with their Ryzen 7 1700X sporting a whopping 8 cores and 16 threads. While that CPU in things such as productivity still does fairly well, all things considered, the not so optimized and or slightly immature architecture along with those slower cores definitely shows. The Intel i7-7700K, also released in 2017 with only 4 cores and 8 threads, has aged much more gracefully when it comes to raw gaming performance. On average, the 7700K therefore ends up being even faster than a Ryzen 7 2700X. So that CPU, unlike what I expected, still holds up fairly well. What impresses me even more though, all things considered, is the i7-4770K back from 2013. Not in the slightest would I have expected for it to be somewhat usable in 2021. And let's keep in mind that I'm testing with an RTX 3090. If we were to use a graphics card with less performance, we'd be looking at significantly smaller gaps between these CPUs. The CPU bottleneck window does tend to close. The graphics card then ends up being the weakest link in the chain. So with the right graphics card, we sure could reach the point in which such an i7-4770K no longer is the system's bottleneck. And this brings us to the next point. How do you actually detect a bottleneck that limits your system's performance? This can easily also be the other way around, with the graphics card being the one heavily bottlenecking the system. I've prepared two games here, Cyberpunk 2077 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Basically, we need to monitor the CPU and GPU load. Recommended software tools for that are MSI Afterburner, Hardware Info 64 and the like. Today I'm going with the MSI Afterburner. Let's first start with a very high resolution, 4K UHD. The GPU, the graphics card, is definitely the limiting factor in this case. When I now lower the resolution down to WQHD 1440p, I'm getting very different results all of a sudden. The GPU now no longer is capable of outputting all of its performance. The CPU is bottlenecking. There's a rule of thumb here. If the GPU load is at 95 to 100%, there's a GPU bottleneck. If the GPU load, however, drops below 90%, we are most of the time talking of a CPU bottleneck. Furthermore, a CPU bottleneck can also show when the CPU load in-game tends to be quite high. In extreme cases, you might hit 100% load, which these days isn't seen that often though. It's safer to primarily focus on the GPU load to determine both CPU and GPU bottlenecks. As long as you don't game with too weak of a graphics card, a GPU bottleneck is much more preferable than a CPU bottleneck. Because a CPU bottleneck not only can cause low frame rates, but also shows itself a lot in very low 1% and 0.1% minimum lows. You're experiencing stuttering, micro freezes, with the screen freezing occasionally for a while, and so on and so forth. A GPU bottleneck therefore mostly is far from being a tragedy as long as it's a somewhat healthy balance. After all, you also have to look at it from this point of view. Even with an AMD Ryzen 9 5950X flagship CPU, the RTX 3090 flagship GPU remains the bottleneck. The 5950X is being held back by the graphics card. So in order to not waste and burn any money, it makes more sense to get and pair components that are actually able to unfold their full potential. Go for well-balanced system configurations between CPU and GPU. Of course, you should take the upgrade path into consideration too. Aside from the current GPU shortage, it's mostly always easier to swap out and upgrade a graphics card than the CPU or a whole platform. So it's safe to make a few exceptions here and there, as long as you don't go overboard. Still, make sure to keep everything as balanced as possible. 
do not build a PC with a $100 CPU along with a $1000 graphics card and also do not build one with a $900 CPU and a $250 graphics card. You get my point. I hope I've covered this topic in a way that all of you watching could understand it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you'll join me again next time around.